BitMix is a hands-on logic module with four two-input channels. It has four different logic functions, which are the same for all of the channels, and it also has a 4-bit digital analog converter to generate stepped voltages from whatever is happening on the output. One of the intent of the BitMix is to be able to take different logic sequences on the input and give you hands-on control to mute and modify whatever sequences are running into it. This patch has two nibblers generating rhythm, each one patched into one side of the bitmix. This nibbler's uh, outputs are patched in reverse bit order so that the most significant bit is going to the bottom here and the least significant bit is going to the top. This means you have faster pulses on this side going to the kick drums and slower pulses going on this side. The top output of the bitmix is going to this angle grinder boundary kick drum. The next one down, a snare from the Weston AD-110. After that, this sort of strange modem percussive sound coming from the interstellar radio and boundary over here. And then uh, the final one is the closed tie hat from the AD-110. We are more or less letting the three-body drone, but sending um, the stepped output to the FM input so we can hear the way that uh, these outputs adding up create a stepped voltage. So one of the more, the most straightforward logic function is probably the OR. This means that any input will send the output high. Right now with all these switches up, we are just listening to this right nibbler. With all the left switches up, we are just listening to the left nibbler. If we put them together, we get some combination of the sequences. Something to watch out for is that um, there is a voltage normalized to the input of the bitmix so that without anything plugged in, you have a high voltage if the switch is up and low if it's down. With the OR function, if this input is always high, then you won't get any change in the output. They will stay high. Aside from, we are combining gates, but or, the OR function would also be a good one for combining triggers. Next up, let's do the AND. So the AND function, the output is high if both of the inputs are high. So the thing to watch out with this one is that either of the inputs are low, then the output is going to be low. And all the outputs will stay low. The AND function is useful though because it sort of combines and simplifies a sequence. You can hear um, it likes to create sort of bursts. So if you have a um, signal that's going high frequently and one that's going high slowly, then um, it will only go high when they're both high. So you can create a burst generator with this function. The XOR function goes high if either input is high, or if they're both high, then it goes low. If we remove an input, 
we can use um, the switch to just invert whatever is coming in. Um, otherwise, the nicest property of the XOR is that for any changing input, it will create an output. Except if the two inputs are exactly the same, then it will cancel them out. This would probably be the function I would recommend for most gate combining purposes since it has the least foot guns. Okay. And here's the add function. The add function is interesting because it is the exact same logic function as the XOR, where if either input goes high, then the output is high, and if they're both high, then it goes low. Except if they're both high, then it carries to the next channel up. We can hear this by muting everything except for the snare. With just one snare channel, we'll just hear the snare. But with two of them, Whenever both of those inputs are high, it carries up and triggers the kick drum, even though the kick drums are down. This has a tendency to create wilder sequences. One way to think of all of these logic functions is that the AND function simplifies, the OR function combines, the XOR function, uh, <laughs> it, um, it's more active. And then the add function can get quite out of control. So you can see that all of these switches can be used as performance controls to get quite a number of different output sequences from the exact same input sequences. Um, to make the sequences wilder, I would probably create some, modulate the nibblers or create some sort of feedback. But I wanted to provide a really simple example. Of course, you don't need to use nibblers as inputs. You could use clock dividers or even any sort of sequencer. Um, You'll get more interesting results with sequencers that output gates than if uh, they output triggers, though you can certainly combine triggers. It's just a high likelihood that the logic function won't do much because uh, triggers are so short. Unrelated to the bit mix, but 
one nice trick with any patch like this is taking one of the stepped outputs and patching it to the CD of your clock input. Done in extremes, this tends to just be jarring. But with just a touch, it can lend a sense of swing to the proceedings. <laughs> 